This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we wanted to show our audience a little bit of springtime maintenance at our primary repeater site. All repeater sites need a little bit of maintenance all year round, and this is our first spring maintenance activity at the 88 site where we have to get out the mower, check the guy lines, and anything else we think might need to be looked at. This week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, on this work day, we got out the big guns yet again. We've been working so hard on the Monticello repeater site since we had to replace the guy line anchors, and uh, and those still have to be tensioned. Uh, Ken Berry, KI4RWO, who runs his own tower business, said, you know what, we need to do some maintenance on our main repeater site as well. And so he's getting out some of the equipment that he uses in his day-to-day -day job. These, uh, these two tripods, uh, we're going to mount uh, transits on top of. And these transits uh, are basically uh, magnified reticles that can go up and down the tower to make sure that the tower is straight. As you start to tension these guy lines, you don't want your tower to be pulled in one direction or another more than it needs to be. And so you set up two of these, uh, usually at a 90 degree angle from each other to see if the tower is indeed staying plumb or straight. So Ken setting up his tripods, a little bit rainy this day, as you can see we've got our jackets on and the ground's pretty soft where he can get a nice purchase with his tripods. Now we get out the transits. Uh, these are by David White, as you can see there, we need two of these. He's going to be setting these up on the tripods. So he goes to work fiddling with the knobs, making sure that the transit's going to be level and uh, making sure the bubbles are where he wants them. And uh, now he's going to start uh, looking that tower up and down, making sure that he's staying straight so he'll get a point of reference at the bottom and then work his way up to the top to make sure that we're not pulling the tower in one direction or another. So now we begin to take off the shackles. We've got uh, some hardware that uh, goes through the items that we're going to tighten or loosen, and a bit of cable goes through these to prevent them from backing off. And so we're taking off these shackles uh, so that we can begin the process of tightening these guy lines based on Ken's experience and a tool that we're gonna whip out here in just a little while. So now that we've got those shackles off, we're gonna pull the cable out of the buckles that will free up the buckles so that we can turn them to tighten or loosen them. The worst you've ever seen? Not anymore. Really a little tighter than when we got over, here. We got over here. Just loose by just tightening those two there. But it still needs to be a little more tighter, you think? That's hugely better, bigly I'm, better. I'm not going to adjust this top one here because the tower needs to go that way. So we'll go. We have to we'll do the pull, top one over on the other side. We'll go pull uh, the top back over, and then we'll adjust these two here. Oh. We'll pull. Oh, they will pull this 
back in even, detention. even back yeah. in detention. Uh -huh. So a little bit tighter, but we've also got to do this kind of like um, when you're doing putting a a, t a wheel on a you want to go cross right instead right. of going around right. the circle. You want to get your first lug nut super tight because then you put your rim in a bind. Same right. Way, same way with the tower. If you put this, if you get this uh, torqued down tight, mm -hmm. and then you go tighten your other ones. Well, now you put three times the pressure on the guy wire. On the guy wire than what yeah, you wanted. Right, and you're just fighting you're, against you're each just, other now. Yeah, putting more stress. Well, it's at this point that Ken goes back to the transit to check the tower and is it staying plumb? Because as we tighten it, we don't want to be pulling it in one direction or another. And as he explained, we don't want to pull too much in one direction without also taking into account the other two legs. Two guy wires that's tight and one that's loose, everybody will say, well, just tighten up the loose one. Well, maybe the tower is pulled towards that loose one causing the slack on it. So you may need to tighten up the ones that's tight to pull the slack out of the ones mm. that's loose to get your tire back in plumb. Interesting, okay. So we go back at it. Now we keep going from one leg to the other, tightening just a little bit, tightening just a little bit, and then Ken popping those wires just to see what type of uh, kind of wave he puts through the wire. He's done this so many times he can get a good feel for this, but it's not exact. And that's when we're gonna whip out a really cool tool, a gauge, if you will, that will give us an idea of whether or not the correct tension is being applied. What you do, this gauge here, you put your wire between here and then you pull this back and hook it on your cable going up. And the tighter you get it, the more this will stretch up and it'll pull your, it'll pull your gauge out. And then you get a reading on whatever it is. And then you got your diameter of the guy wire marked out, 3 16 7 30 seconds and a quarter inch. This tower has three sixteenths on it, so we've been using these gauges here. And the black ones? The first row here. Yeah. So we want um, we want about 14% of it. We wanted about 640 pounds. 640? Yeah. That's what we're shooting for. So we're looking for 21 up here uh -huh. to be 640 down here. Yeah. 14%. And if we tighten the other one, might it go to 21? Give me one to stop. Stop. Right. <laughs> well, that was close already, Ken. We got there. 20? Well, 20 in the 10th, maybe? Yeah, started at 20. So you can about tell something you got are if you've been around them enough. To... I would imagine, yeah. We got there, 19? Yeah, 19. 18 and a half. Doug. Yeah, it's coming up. Almost there. One more turn, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Bob's your uncle. So at this point, we start wrapping things up. We've gone across all three legs, put our gauge on all three of the guy line wires to make sure they're pretty darn close. To 2021 putting a roughly about 640 pounds of pressure and we're putting the the uh, wires back in so that those buckles won't back off from vibration and stuff vibration on keeps the buckles just, from ever moving yeah just keep them from backing back off right 
Which brings us to what else was going on on this workday. As you heard in the background, we definitely had Ben, KK4 JPX, doing a little bit of mowing, but uh, we also were putting in some shelves on some of our racks for some future equipment that may get placed in the shack. And so AC4DM is uh, putting in the screws here to hold that shelf in place. In addition, we got a $90 heating bill, <laughs> much higher than what was expected. And we found out that we had a thermostat that had gone out. There's the relay that would engage the heater, but it was actually the thermostat that supplies a little bit of voltage to that relay that had shorted and was causing it to be on all the time. So we need to replace that for next winter. And there's Ben finishing up on some of his mowing. We always have to mow about once a month as we go up to the 88 site. And that will do it for this workday. As you can tell, if you use a repeater, there is maintenance to be done. And we wanna show that in our video so that you can thank your club or whoever does take care of this maintenance each time you use that repeater. Me to a good point. If you're not already in a club, you probably should join one. And at the bare minimum, maybe kick in a few dollars for these kinds of maintenance activities. Ken and people like him uh, do this for a living. They charge for this kind of work. They climb towers, they set up towers, they tension guy lines, they do a lot of work. So if you're using a repeater but you've never kicked in any funds, maybe it's time to do so. Or again, maybe join that local club in your area if you're using their repeater. I'm KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We hope you liked the video. Please subscribe and comment down below. Take care and 73.